Hello ladies and gentlemen, scary 24 here bringing you another Minecraft World War II aircraft tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll be going ahead and building the North American P-51D Mustang. The North American Aviation P-51 Mustang D is an American long-range single-seat fighter and fighter-bomber used during World War II and the Korean War, among other conflicts. The Mustang was designed in April 1940 by a team headed by James Kingleberg of North American Aviation in response to a requirement of the British Purchasing Commission. The Purchasing Commission approached North American Aviation to build the Curtis P-40 fighters under license for the Royal Air Force. Rather than build an old design from another company, North American Aviation proposed the design and production of a more modern fighter. The prototype NA-73X airframe was rolled out on September 9, 1940, 102 days after the contract was signed and first flew on October 26. The Mustang was designed to use the Allison V1710 engine, which had limited high altitude performance in its earlier variants. The aircraft was first flown operationally by the RAF as a tactical reconnaissance aircraft and fighter bomber, Mustang Mark I. Replacing the Allison with a Rolls Royce Merlin resulted in the P 51B/C, Mustang Mark III model, and transformed the aircraft's performance at altitudes above 15,000 feet or 4,600 meters without sacrificing range, allowing it to compete with the Luftwaffe's fighters. The definitive version, the P-51D, was powered by the Packard V-1650-7, a license-built version of the two-speed, two-stage, supercharged Merlin 66. It was armed with six 50 caliber uh, AN-M2 Browning machine guns. From late 1943, P-51Bs and Cs um, supplemented by P-51Ds from mid 1944, were used by the U.S. Uh, AAF's Eighth Air Force to escort bombers in raids over Germany, while the RAF's Second Tactical Air Force and U.S. AAF's Ninth Air Force used the Merlin-powered Mustangs as fighter bombers. Roles in which the Mustang helped ensure Allied air superiority in 1944. The P-51 was also used by Allied air forces in the North American, Mediterranean, Italian, and Pacific theaters during World War II. Mustang pilots came to claim to have destroyed 4,950 enemy aircraft. At the start of the Korean War, the Mustang, by then redesignated the F-51, was the main fighter of the United States until jet fighters, including North American F-86s, uh, took over this role. The Mustang then became a specialized fighter bomber. Despite the advent of jet fighters, the Mustang remained in service with some air forces until the early 1980s. After the Korean War, Mustangs became popular civilian warbirds and air racing aircraft. So yeah, the P-51 uh, D Mustang, one of the most iconic American aircraft, I would say, really kind of in existence, honestly. Um, just because of its iconic uh, role in the played in World War II, and uh, it's just a beautiful looking fighter, basically your peak um, World War II fighter from the United States. Um, and that information there about it actually originally being used by the British, also kind of new to me, uh, didn't actually really know that, so it's kind of cool also. Uh, to, you know, learn something every day, I guess. But overall, really nice looking aircraft and a beautiful model here that's going to basically highlight this gorgeous aircraft that was um, so iconic in its history and still is a very iconic aircraft today. Um, but basically, this right here is going to be the in-flight tutorial for this aircraft, so only be covering the in-flight version. We will be doing the landed version here very soon as a tutorial as well, so keep an eye out for that if you are looking for a nice landed version for this aircraft uh, that will be coming. Uh, but yeah, as I mentioned, this is the D version, so the D version here basically was one of the first versions, actually I think the first version to use the bubble canopy, rather than the Razorback, um, kind of, uh, I guess, spine of the aircraft. Um, so it's the first one to have a bubble canopy, which helped uh, greatly increase the visibility for the pilot himself. Uh, but yeah, really nice looking aircraft, and um, let's just go ahead and jump in and take a look at it. So starting off with, we have basically... Um, a uh, certain you know color scheme here we have a green kind of a uh, design or a green color scheme up on top here of the um, fuselage of the aircraft so pretty simple straightforward just green up on top a yellow tip nose uh, a little bit of the red uh, basically uh, rudder uh, highlighted there in red and then we have the invasion stripes on the aircraft here so they're white and black stripes on the wings and then also the ones on the back here kind of after the the um, the uh, cockpit we have the little lines that go halfway up the fuselage and kind of wrap around the bottom portion there and that air intake there. Uh, but overall, really nice looking model. Uh, just really good design uh, overall. Um, 
lots of good details. You have your uh, 50 caliber machine guns, the props, the um, uh, obviously the logo, the uh, you know national star insignia, which is used on the aircraft here on the side, uh, the lettering and stuff like that on the aircraft, and the tail. Just a lot of really good detail in it, and just a beautiful model that's going to make an awesome addition to any of your World War II worlds, even into some Korean maps you may be working on. And just a beautiful aircraft to display on your worlds. Anyways though, that's it for uh, this overview. Let's go and move into the tutorial for the in-flight P-51D Mustang. Alright guys, so moving into our first layer here, we're going to go ahead and begin with layer number 3. Now we're starting with layer B 3 because layers 1 and 2 really just cover the little scoop on the bottom of the aircraft. So it's a little bit easier for us to start this one and kind of get a better um, portion of the aircraft built. And it's a little bit easier to kind of build off of this um, when we go ahead and move on to the other layers. Um, in addition, if you're completely new to my aircraft tutorials, the way I like to structure these tutorials, I like to do half on camera, half off. What this means is we're going to be building the entire centerline of the aircraft and then the right side. It would be up to you guys in between layers to take what we do on the right side and copy over to the left side. This aircraft is symmetrical, so whatever we do on one side will be present on the other side. Um, with that though, let's go ahead and um, dive into it. So, going ahead and getting started with here, we want to go ahead and uh, start off by placing down a row of polished anisite. This row here is going to be a total of nine blocks long, like so. The direction we want our the front of the aircraft facing is gonna be this way here. So on the front here, if you're on Java, we're gonna place down a piston upside down like so. So just like that. If you're on um, Bedrock or Pocket Edition, I would place down a polished anisite stair. Reason why we'll be using a tool that's only available on Java to actually alter this piston to kind of help with our front sloping there. So that's why we have this piston placed here, but I would recommend using a polished anisite stair again if you're on a different version other than Java. Anyways, after this block here, we're gonna place down a spruce wood, or sorry, a birchwood top slab, and then a birchwood trap door. On the other side here, we're gonna go, ahead and go back uh, the, to the rear of the aircraft. We're gonna place down a smooth quartz full block, a black concrete block, smooth quartz full block, a narrow brick top slab, and two iron trap doors like so. After that's all complete, we're gonna go ahead and then start working our way out to the sides. On the sides of either this stair or piston, we're gonna place down a skeleton skull, then three glass panes back. And then one, two, three, four, five polished anisite blocks, a narrow brick stair, a direct wall, a narrow brick wall, and then a skeleton skull, just like that. After that is done there, we're going to go then grab ourselves a, another brick stair. We're going to place down another brick stair here, come off this polished anisite block, then two black concrete blocks, then a narrow brick stair, and a narrow brick slab directly after that. Our um, next uh, row here is going to be a quartz, smooth quartz slab, two smooth quartz blocks, and then two more smooth quartz slabs back. We're going to place down a narrow brick slab here, followed by a uh, narrow brick stair like so, a black concrete block, and then two more narrow brick slabs going back from the black concrete block. After that, we're going to then place down a polished anisite stair, come off this narrow brick stair here, a polished anisite block behind the stair, and then a narrow polished anisite stair, and a narrow polished anisite top slab. We then want to place down three polished anisite top slabs, uh, across, then a second row of three going across here, and then one in the center like so. We then want to place down an iron trap door on both of these tops, both sides of this top slab, then a row of three of iron trap doors across, then a row of two like that toward the front there. At this point here, we're going to go then grab ourselves some chains. We're going to go to the stair and the two slabs here. We're going to place down three chains on the side there for the machine guns there for our wings. With uh, that all complete there, um, that right there is going to conclude what we have for um, layer number three here. Take a look at it from above. This is what we should have from the top down view. Take what we did on the right side and copy it over to the left side. Anyways though, that is it for layer number three. And with that, let's move down to layers one and two. Moving into our next layer, we have layers one and two. For these layers here, we're going to go to the bottom here of the aircraft. We're going to go to our third polished anisite block right here. We're going to place down our iron trap door on the bottom of it, followed by one, two, and three more. So you have a total of four. We're going to skip a space and then place down a black concrete block. Uh, Come off this black concrete block toward the front. We're going to place down an iron trap door. And on the bottom of the black concrete and iron trap door, we're going to place down two iron trap doors basically below those. We then want to go ahead and go after this black concrete block. We're going to place down an air brick upside down stair, a smooth quartz top slab directly after that. And then we can go ahead and grab ourselves a dark oak wood trap door and place down one right here directly after that. Once we have uh, that done, we're going to then go to the side here of the. Um, black concrete block and we're going to place down a polished anisite stair like so and then after that we're going to place down a narrow polished anisite upside down stair going back from it followed by a nether brick slab like so after uh, that is all done right there that is going to basically conclude what we have here actually real quick also come off these two stairs going forward we're going to place down two iron trap doors 
like that. After that, that right there, we can uh, finish off what we have there for the bottom of the aircraft there for layers one and two. And with that, we'll be going ahead and moving into our next layer, layer number four. Moving into our next layer, we have layer number four. For layer four to begin with, we're going to place down a yellow concrete block on top of this birchwood slab. And we're going to go ahead and place down a yellow shulker box coming off that sideways, going forward like so. And on the very tip of that shulker box, we're just going to place down a skeleton or wither skeleton skull like so. Going back from the yellow concrete, we're going to place down a polished anside block, two anvils, two polished anside blocks, and then we want to go ahead and either leave a space of four open if you want to do, it a or do a cockpit. If not, then you'll go ahead and just fill this in for row four black concrete as I did here. Either way, leave a row four open here or fill this in with black concrete if you don't plan on doing an interior. After that though, we're going to go ahead and place down two polished anside blocks like so, a black concrete block, a smooth quartz block, a black concrete block, three polished anside blocks back, and then a red nether brick up sounds down on the end there. After that, going to the sides, we're going to place down a wither skeleton skull on the side of this uh, shulker box, followed by a yellow stingless paint on the side of that yellow concrete block, light gray stingless paint back, two polished anside top slabs going on the side here. Coming off those, we're going to place down uh, two item frames, and then we're going to place down black beds in the item frames, rotated sideways like so, and then we just want to go ahead and then place down a dark oakwood sign coming off the sides here of these top slabs if you're on Java. Uh, putting the sides and iron frames in the same block space is going to be a Java only feature. Uh, if you're on Bedrock or Pocket Edition, just go ahead and place the item frames and disregard the signs. After that, we're going to go ahead and place down one, two, three, four, five, six, and a set of walls back, a narrow brick wall, a diorite wall, a narrow brick wall, a uh, white stained glass pane, and a black stained glass pane after that, like that, working our way down the um, sides. After that, moving to the uh, wings of the aircraft, we're going to go ahead and place down two iron trap doors on top of these two right here. And then grabbing ourselves daylight detectors, we're going to place down a row of three out to the side here, in which we'll go ahead and turn these to the night mode like so. We then want to place down two iron trap doors right here on top of these two, and then two daylight detectors. Again, we're going to turn those to night mode. And then taking our light gray carpet, we're just going to place down two light gray carpet like so. Over here on the left side of the wing, so at this point of this tutorial, I would recommend going ahead and taking the right side and flip it over to the left side and having a design look like this here from the top down view. Uh, also, one thing I want to add on uh, to this build also is going to be from the previous layer, and that's going to be a narrow brick slab coming off that one going back like so. And um, that right there will basically fix this area up a little bit better. Um, so yeah, the narrow brick slab should go back like so. Um, from that. Uh, but anyways, once you have a view that looks like this from up above, you're pretty much all set and good to go. What I would like to mention here is that uh, basically on the left side here, we do have the National Star Insignia, which is on the wing. And to do this, very simply, this uh, would be a iron trap door right there. It is going to be replaced with a warp trap door, so this right here, and then it's going to be a white carpet here right next to it, like so. And that's going to be on the left wing and the left wing only for the National Star Insignia for the aircraft. Anyways, though, that right there is going to conclude what we have for uh, layer number four. And with that, let's go ahead and move into layer number five. So real quick, before we move on to layer five, I want to go ahead and mention that if you're on Java, we're going to go ahead and real quickly use a command. And that's going to be the slash give uh, command, which will be slash give space at P. And then we're going to type in Minecraft colon debug stick. And it should autofill, press tab, and we get this, uh, this right here, this command. So by pressing enter, it will give us this glowing stick. And what we can do is we can go up to this piston here on the bottom near the front and left click or sorry, right click it to go ahead and form uh, this uh, piston looks like that. Um, so just make sure you uh, just go ahead and do that. Keep this uh, debug stick handy because we will be using that a little bit later. Uh, but yeah, that's if you're on um, Java. Anyways, can, let's go ahead and move on to layer five. Layer five here, we're gonna go ahead and place down a birchwood trap door on top of this shulker box here, followed by a birchwood slab behind it. And we then want to place down two shulker or two pistons. Now, if you're on a different version, I would recommend placing down probably a uh, dark oakwood slab and a dark oakwood stair. Um, but if you're on Java, we're gonna place down our two pistons. We're gonna place down one, two, three, four green terracotta blocks, followed by a row of three of black stained glass full blocks, and then one, two, three, four, five, and six um, green terracotta blocks, two polished anzite blocks, and a red concrete block there on the end. After that, going back up to the front here, we're gonna place down a um, zombie head, a slight angle on top of this uh, glass pane like so, and then we're gonna place down two green stained glass panes back from that, three mossy cobbles to walls, two dark oakwood slabs, and then a dark oakwood sign there on the side of that slab. We then wanna place down one, two, three, four mossy cobbles to walls, and then one, two, three green stained glass panes. 
We're going to go ahead and take our polished andesite slabs. We're going to place down one, two, three, four out to the side here, and one, two, three, and four out to the side as well. After that is all done, we want to go ahead and then take our debug stick. We're going to go ahead and go to these pistons, and we can go ahead and right-click them and go ahead and kind of form them like so. At this point, though, that right there is almost it for this. Yeah, that's actually going to be it for this layer. At this point, we're going to go ahead and now move into making the banners here on the sides of the aircraft. Now, real quickly, I do want to mention that I will not be showing you guys how to make the letter banners. As you can see, I just have DNA. It doesn't really, doesn't really mean anything in particular. Um, you can look at real-life pictures and stuff like that of it um, to go ahead and kind of make your letters on the side of the aircraft here. But as you can see, I just have these um, letters here and there are plenty of tutorials out there that show you guys how to make letters so if you want to kind of make your own then you'll be basically able to do that so uh, just feel free to go ahead and find tutorials for that but basically to position them super simple it's going to be a uh, your first letter on top of this or on the screen stained glass pane here and then your other letter is going to be on this mossy cobblestone wall here and same thing will be over here so you want to read, read left to right so we have the D and then we have the A, so you want it to be D and A over here, so it reads left to right. Anyways, though, with that all out of the way, uh, we're going to go ahead and now move into making these banners uh, for the side of the aircraft. So I'm going to go and grab the materials, and let's go ahead and get started. All right, guys, so going ahead and moving into making our banners here. They're pretty simple to do. Our first banner, or what we're going to need material-wise, is two black banners, two white dye, two green dye, three white dye, and four blue dye. We're going to go ahead and go into our loom. We're going to place our black banners first and our green dye. We're going to select the lines across the top here for each of our green banners. So just like this, so we get two green banners that look like this. Both these banners will be placed back into our loom with our white dye. We're going to go and do the stripe that goes horizontally through the center for both these banners. Like that. Then we're going to go ahead and place down one of these banners, so whichever one you want. Place it into the loom, and then we're going to go ahead and have our white dye. We're going to go and do the line on the bottom here, horizontally like so. And we have these two banners like so. We're going to go then take our white banners, place them into our loom, and our blue dye. Our first banner here is going to be a square on the bottom left, and then we're going to go do a square on the top left, like that in the corners. We're going to go and then do the same thing for this banner, except reverse. So bottom right corner and top right corner, go ahead and make this banner. After we have that done, we very simply want to go ahead and go to the side of the aircraft, and lining up with the colors of our stripes here, we have the uh, banner with the black bottom, these uh, two blue banners, or these two white banners facing each other like so, and then this... Uh, banner here with the white on the bottom corresponding to the white there over here on the other side It's gonna be the same thing black White and there are two banners like that facing toward each other And that right there is basically what you should have for the banners same thing will be applied to both sides there of the aircraft And once you have that all done right there that is basically it for the markings and um, With that so uh, we'll be going ahead and moving up to our next layer which will be layer number six Moving into our next layer, we have layer 6. For layer 6 to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to take a dark oak trapdoor, we're going to place it down on our third green terracotta block down the center here, and then we're going to place it on the second trapdoor after that. We're going to go ahead and place down a narrow brick stair, two black stained glass blocks, and another narrow brick stair on the back here, followed by a dark oak wood slab, a dark oak wood fence post, skip a space, and then a dark oak wood trapdoor, polished andesite slab, two black coal blocks, or I should say coal ore blocks, and then a red nether brick wall there on the very end. After we have that done, go into the sides of the cockpit. We're going to place down a wither skeleton skull on the side of the stair. Then we're going to place down two black stained glass panes back, and then a wither skeleton skull at a slight angle on top of that mossy cobblestone wall, just like that. And that right there is going to basically do it for uh, that layer there. At this point, I do want to go ahead and take some time to go ahead and now put the props on, on the aircraft. Now that we have the nose kind of complete, we can go ahead and very simply place the props on. Um, so for us, what I went ahead and did here for the props is I went ahead and placed down a polished black stone uh, wall on top of this uh, yellow stained glass pane on both sides here and uh, we actually want to make sure that this is polished black stone so it'll be like this here to both sides and then it's going to drop down here and do the same thing we're going to then go from these walls out to the sides like so for all four and then after that we're going to then go place down a wall up above and a skeleton spool Turn off the side of that wall. Same thing, wall going down, skeleton skull to the side of that, and then delete that block like that. And there, there will basically make our props. As you can see, I did accidentally update the pistons. Um, if you place a block anywhere near these pistons after they've been activated, they will uh, revert back to that state. So just go ahead and fix that if you do make that mistake. Anyways, though, that right there is going to conclude what we have there for uh, the propellers. And uh, with that, we'll go ahead and move up to our uh, last final layers. Alright guys, so when it comes to our last final layers, pretty simple stuff. Uh, we have layers 7, 
uh, through nine. So for these layers here, we're going to go ahead and go to the top of this fence post to begin with. We're going to place down a zombie head, followed by a barrier block. That will go back, or two barrier blocks that will go back from the zombie heads. On the side of the uh, first one, we're going to place down a button here to the right side, and then a button on top of the second barrier block, like so. Then for the tail, we're going to place down an anti wall on top of this coal ore block, polished anti block, and a red nether brick wall right behind that. On top of this polished anti block, we're going to place down one more, a light gray stingless pane going forward and a red stingless pane going back, and then an, end rod, or an iron trap door on top. We then want to place down a barrier block coming off this glass pane with a stone button here to the right side, like so, for that cabling. And after we have that all done, that right there is going to basically conclude my tutorial here for the in-flight version for the P-51D Mustang. Hopefully you guys do enjoy this aircraft and are able to put it to good use. If you do amuse this as I do, I say you guys give me proper credit for it. This is me from a side of the build, tweet to my channel, or this video if this does bring you social media sites. As long as you guys give me proper credit for it, you're free to use it for projects you guys are working on. And that though, thank you guys again so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Gary 2 4 and I'll see you guys next time.